This virtual tour highlights naval aviation advances from post-World War II through the Korean War years. During that time, first-generation jet aircraft took flight while helicopters emerged as a valuable naval tool. The Bell HTL Su helicopters served the Navy between 1947 and 1958. Marine Corps HTL saved many lives by evacuating battlefield casualties to aid stations. The Coast Guard used SUs for multi-mission support in the New York Harbor. Astronaut James Lovell flew this helicopter in conjunction with the Apollo program. In 1949 the Hiller Aircraft Corporation produced the HTE that employed a new rotormatic control system which made it easy to handle and provided a high degree of stability. During the Korean War, the Navy used the HTE as a light utility helicopter for medical evacuations, observation, and other utility needs. Sikorsky's HO-3S was used in Operation High Jump, the first post-World War II Antarctic expedition. It was the first aircraft carrier-borne helicopter employed in plane guard duty, standing by to rescue pilots who ditched during flight operations. It was the Navy's primary utility helicopter during the Korean War period, rescuing downed air crews and evacuating injured ground personnel. Operating from 1946 to 1955, the Sikorsky HO-5S featured an opening front bubble for easy access. Their rear-mounted engine allowed them to carry four passengers or two stretchers. Improved control and stability made them ideal for night flying. Their first service was with the Marine Corps as scouts, observation platforms, and medical evacuation vehicles. The Piasetsky Hup Retriever served as a search and rescue aircraft between 1949 to 1964. They had an internal hoist and floor hatch that enabled the rescue of downed pilots or injured personnel. Retrievers performed plane guard duties, recovering downed pilots who ditched their aircraft while at sea. At the height of their service, they deployed on board all fleet aircraft carriers. Cessna's 01 Bird Dog Service began in Korea in a scouting role for Army and Marine units. In Vietnam, bird dogs were used as a forward air control aircraft, marking targets with signal rockets and directing tactical airstrikes. Later in the war, it was replaced by Cessna 02 and North American OV 10As and was assigned to the South Vietnamese Air Force. De Havilland's U-1 Otters supported Navy squadrons during operations Deep Freeze 2 and 3. These operations were to build a permanent station at the South Pole along with three other stations. The Navy employed the North American Aviation T-28 Trojan as a basic trainer from 1952 through 1984. The Trojan had the look, feel, sound, and power of early World War II fighters. Students found the Trojan to be sturdy and roomy, with great visibility, plus it was responsive, docile, and fully aerobatic. Slow fight, as necessitated by carrier operations, was particularly impressive, as was the power response of the large radial engine. Beginning in 1957, Lockheed's TV-2s trained the Navy's first generation of jet pilots. Though successful as a land-based trainer, the TV-2 was not satisfactory for carrier operations. Several TV-2s were modified for supportive missile and target trials. They remained in service into the 1970s. Douglas's R-4D Sky Train was a version of the DC-3 that served as staff transports as well as para-dropping supplies and flares during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Three of the four Sky Trains that participated in Operation Deep Freeze were lost. During the Korean War, the Lockheed P-2V Neptune flew railroad interdiction and spotted naval gunfire in addition to its maritime patrol missions. Grumman's F-7F Tigercat was the first twin-engine fighter ordered in large quantities and the first carrier aircraft to incorporate tricycle landing gear. Too late for service in World War II, the Tigercat served in several Marine Corps squadrons until 1954. They performed close air support, night fighter, reconnaissance, 
and utility missions during the Korean War. Grumman's F-8F Bearcat has been described as an engine with a saddle on it. Introduced in May 1945, the Bearcat was the most powerful single-engine propeller aircraft ever built, outperforming all others in all aspects of combat maneuverability. It became a major Navy and Marine Corps fighter, equipping 24 fighter squadrons in the Navy and a smaller number in the Marines until retired in 1963. The Bearcat was the second aircraft used by the Navy's elite Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Squadron. Entering service in 1946, the Douglas AD Sky Raider was one of the finest attack aircraft operating in Korea. Sky Raiders attacked heavily defended industrial targets such as power plants and bridges and even knocked out the Hwakin Dam. In Vietnam, they were part of the first strike against North Vietnam following the Gulf of Tonkin incident. They flew attack missions until 1968 when sophisticated anti-aircraft defenses made it too hazardous. Martin's AM Mahler was both a dive and torpedo bomber. The aircraft proved troublesome and served on carriers only between 1948 until 1950. Pilots found Mahler's a heavy handling aircraft that was difficult to fly in formation and hard to land on a carrier. In 1950, Mahler's operated only from shore-based units and later that year only naval reserve units flew them until they retired in 1953. Grumman's AF-2S Guardian was the weapons part of a two-plane anti-submarine hunter-killer team that served between 1950 and 1955. They carried sono buoys, rockets, depth charges, bombs, and homing torpedoes. During the Korean War, Guardians served in the maritime patrol role. Guardians were unpopular with pilots, being underpowered and heavy on the controls plus the aircraft suffered from a severely high accident rate. A McDonnell FH Phantom made the first pure jet fighter landing on an American aircraft carrier. Phantoms were built only to prove the viability of carrier-based jet fighter aircraft. Their operation began in 1947, equipping only one Navy and two Marine squadrons, until retired in 1949. Entering service in 1948, McDonald's F-2H Banshee proved to be a fast and capable high-altitude fighter. It was capable of cruising on one engine at altitude and was very stable in operations aboard ship. Banshees provided top cover escort for Air Force B-29 bombing raids into North Korea. Later versions served as the fleet's primary all-weather carrier fighter until 1959. McDonald's F-2H-2P photo Banshee was Naval Aviation's most capable photo reconnaissance platform during the Korean War. Its long range, high ceiling, and speed resulted in wide reconnaissance coverage and made it difficult to intercept. They provided roughly 40% of the daytime Korean reconnaissance needs. Marine Photo Reconnaissance Squadron 1 shot enough exposed film to circle the globe six and a half times. Photo Banshees served from 1948 to 1961. Introduced in 1949, the Soviet MiG-15, NATO named Faggot, was one of the world's first successful swept-wing fighters. MiG-15s outclassed other fighters until the Air Force's F-86 Sabre arrived in Korea. They always operated in pairs, with an attacking leader covered by a wingman. A northwestern portion of North Korea was dubbed MiG Alley and became the site of numerous MiG-15 and F-86 dogfights. North American's FJ-2 was a naval version of the Air Force's F-86 Sabre. It was not a fully carrier-capable fighter, so it was handed off to the Marine Corps. The Furies Dash 4 version overcame problems with carrier operations, provided increased range, improved fighter bomber capabilities, and upgraded high speed performance. 1,115 FJs were delivered to the Navy and Marine Corps and operated between 1954 and 1962. Douglas's F 3D Sky Knight was a carrier based all weather fighter with a mission to find and destroy enemy aircraft at night. Sky Knights downed several MiG-15s over Korea with only one air-to-air -air loss. 
The F-3H Demon Fighter was McDonnell Aircraft Corporation's first swept-wing aircraft. Between August 1952 and October 1955 11 Demons crashed killing four pilots resulting in a temporary production cancellation. Production resumed in 1956 with improved Demons, but they did not overcome their performance limitations. Despite their shortcomings, they served as carrier all-weather missile armed interceptors until 1964. Douglas's F-4D Skyray fighter was the first carrier aircraft to hold world speed and climb records. The Skyray's performance and their arsenal of 20mm cannon and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles led to them serving in the North American Air Defense Command. At the height of their service, they equipped 17 front-line Navy and Marine Corps squadrons. Because the Navy was moving from straight fighters to fighter bombers, the F-4D had a short career, serving between 1956 and 1964. Bots F-7U Cutlass was a not-ready-for-prime-time fighter bomber earning the nickname Gutless Cutlass. All three XF-7U prototypes crashed, as did two of the first 14 production aircraft. They had the highest accident rate of all Navy swept-wing fighters. Cutlasses were the first missile-armed planes to deploy overseas and served until 1959. Grumman's F-9F Panther was a straight-winged carrier-based fighter used extensively in the Korean War. The Grumman F-9F Cougar was the Panther's swept-wing successor, serving as a fighter-bomber beginning in 1953. A trio of F-9Fs accomplished the first transcontinental flights completed in less than four hours. Their sole combat role occurred in Vietnam where four training versions of the aircraft briefly served as forward air control aircraft. The Cougar was the first swept-wing airplane flown by the Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Team. Grumman's F-11F Tiger fighter bomber featured thin swept wings, incorporated spoilers instead of ailerons, and had a coke bottle-shaped fuselage design that enabled it to exceed Mach 1. After firing guns in a dive during a test flight, the pull-out trajectory overtook the bullets, causing an engine flame-out and a subsequent force landing. The Tiger saw limited carrier service between 1956 and 1961 as two of the most capable fighters of the time, the F-8U Crusader and F-4H Phantom II were also serving the Navy. Later, they flew with the Blue Angels into 1969. The USS Coral Sea made her first deployment in 1949. Most deployments were in the Mediterranean with the 6th Fleet until she is modernized in 1957. I hope you enjoyed this virtual tour of the Korean War era aircraft displayed at the National Naval Aviation Museum.